the short answer. Um, originally, it was suggested um, that um, we should just carry on through, um, but um, that clearly wasn't what residents wanted and wasn't in the interest. We listened, we changed the, the system. Councillor Hogg. Question 35 to the Cabinet member. Um, I thank Councillor Hogg uh, for his question and for highlighting the fact that we are um, implementing a, a design review panel um, in the borough. Um, I think uh, given the huge amounts of uh, fant fantastic development and investment that we have in the borough, it's important that we get the best level of design that we possibly can because um, it will be there for, for many generations to come. Um, I think um, in terms of past schemes, I think it's important that we learn from um, many of the highly successful schemes that we've got across the borough um, and make sure we learn the lessons and why they're successful and, and continue to use those lessons to, to, for future developments. Um, but we also need to learn, learn from our, our less successful schemes um, and one, understand why they didn't work so well and make sure that our, our new ones learn from those and, and don't repeat the same mistakes. Supplementary, Madam. Um, thank you. We do welcome uh, the design review panel. Um, can we look forward to further steps to redress um, decades of excessive familiarity with large property developers? Um, I thank Councillor Hogg for his supplementary. I'm unfortunate I don't really understand, but, but I, I'll be happy to have a communication with him so that I can understand it better and give him a, a better answer. <laughs> Thank you. Question 36 to the Cabinet Member. Um, yes, I thank Councillor Ryder for this question. As I said earlier, it's, we've, we're facing huge amounts of, of challenges with regards to transport infrastructure. Um, and at the moment, even with huge amounts of increases in uh, train sizes and increasing length of platforms, um, improving the road network, improving buses, even with all of those things, we are still going to have huge amounts of problems dealing with the numbers of people that will want to travel in, out and around the borough. Um, and so it's really important that we use every means possible and river transport is going to be a key element of that moving forward and it's really important that we do everything we can and we are doing um, to um, make the case for enhanced investment in river transport and really use the Thames which is a, a significantly underutilised uh, resource at the moment. Um, so I, I, um, I know that the t uh, Transport for London from discussions we've had with them are aware of these issues and they know that more needs to be done. Councillor Cooper. Um, thank the uh, Cabinet Member for, for that answer. It would appear that he does share Councillor Ryder's um, view um, uh, and of the committee that um, the uh, Greater London um, TfL has had a half-hearted approach up until now to river transport. Um, and I find it very heartening that he's talking about um, uh, trying to improve it. Um, however, uh, does he share with me some disappointment that, um, as well as uh, the leader, the MP for Putney and the Assembly member, that the uh, member for Battersea and also the Mayor of London were not at this meeting as well, given the uh, need to press on with this and to have people at the highest level involved in these discussions? And indeed, perhaps he should have been there too. Um, I thank you, uh, the member for uh, the supplementary. Um, I disagree. I don't, I, I don't agree that the, it was, the approach has been half-hearted. I just think um, more can be done. Um, I think um, the, river, the, the river's potential is huge um, and it's, it's significantly underutilised at the moment. I think, I think even more can be done. I wouldn't uh, describe it as half-hearted. Mr. Ben Johnson. Uh, question 37. Uh, I thank Councillor uh, Johnson for his question on Boris Bikes. <laughs> um, unfortunately, um, and Councillor Johnson and I have had discussions about this, and, and um, we, 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 we share the view that um, uh, we'd like to see Boris Bikes uh, to the south of the borough, going through my ward in Ballam, um, down Bedford, uh, Nightingale, and, and into Tooting as well. Um, unfortunately, Transport for London do not see that as a priority at this stage. Um, I think what we need to do is make sure that um, Boris bikes are a huge success in Wandsworth when they come here uh, over the next uh, year or so. Um, and if they're a huge success, then it will make the case for expanding the Boris bikes to the south of the borough um, irresistible. Supplementary. <coughs> I thank the uh, cabinet member for, uh, for his answer. And uh, as he says, we... we 
we are of a similar view on this. I'd, I'd, I'd just like to go slightly further and say that, you, you know, it, the, the, uh, the cycle hire scheme which um, former Mayor Livingston uh, introduced and, and has seen such success and popularity, um, you know, it, it is a great example of, uh, you know, effective policy making. The, the super highway scheme has the potential to be um, a well-implemented policy, but there just seems to be this lack of any joined up thinking between the two. It seems absolutely ridiculous. Will you agree with this? It seems ridiculous in planning the super highway schemes and in introducing the mayor's cycle hire scheme to the borough not to join the two together and, you know, insist on that provision uh, all along the route of cycle super highway 7 so that people can make the most in Balaman tooting of, uh, of both policy measures. I thank Councillor Johnson for, for the supplementary. Um, I think it's just a matter of time. I think um, I, 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 I'm certainly not sure 100% exactly how uh, the Boris Bike schemes I think will be different in a, a, a borough like Wandsworth um, in, compared to um, uh, the inner London borough, say, of, of Westminster. Um, and, and so I suspect um, there's a little bit of, from Transport for London, of, of waiting to see how it works in the outer boroughs a little bit. Um, and I think. So I think we, what we're going through at the moment is a growing process of Boris bikes. I think as they grow, that we, we shall see them expanding through uh, different areas. Because of course, Cycle Super Highway goes through, for example, the north of Battersea and Queenstown, and of course, that they they are they will be there um, along along beside that part of the Cycle Super Highway. Mr. Cooper, thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Um, is the cabinet member aware of the level of confusion that exists amongst cyclists and other road users as to the status and nature of the blue areas marked out for the cycle superhighways, um, as evidenced on um, street life and, and so on, if, if he cares to look? And would it be possible for the council to consider putting something on the website that explains to people quite clearly the status and whether or not it is exclusively for the use of cyclists and so on and so forth? I think this would. Um, really help in terms of safety if we were able to put something onto our website and perhaps into Brightside. Um, I thank the councillor uh, for, the, for the supplementary. Um, I, I, I had seen the, the debate, well, a short one, I have to say, in Street Life, um, and I had been discussing uh, these issues with um, with the ones with cycling campaign. Um, and actually, they didn't feel they, they, they certainly didn't feel that there is a, a, an issue, um, and cyclists seem to be clearly aware. Um, I think, um, with regards to motorists, um, I'm actually welcome that they, they've, they've used a sensible precautionary approach. Uh, to um, the, the, the uh, blue bike lanes and generally steer out of them. I think that's to be welcomed. So I, I don't feel that there is a need to, to change anything on, with regards to the website. Time for questions is now over.